In this beginner's guide to using EndNote, I'll show you everything that you need to get started, including how to download references straight from your web browser and how to add citations and bibliographies into Microsoft Word. I've previously created beginner guides on using other reference manager softwares, so be sure to check those out after this if you're interested. With that said, let's get started with a quick overview of what EndNote is. EndNote is a premium reference manager software for Windows and Mac. I say premium as unfortunately you have to pay for a license. However, that's probably not an issue for a lot of you in academia, as you can usually get access via your university for free. For those that don't have a license, there is a completely free 30-day free trial if you want to check it out. And note that you'll need to enter a credit card upon sign up, but don't worry as you can cancel any time. To download the latest version of EndNote, version 20 in this case, simply head on over to their homepage, and I'll leave a link in the description below for this. Select to purchase a license or download the demo and follow the instructions to install the software. Another thing I suggest you do at this point is to install the EndNote Quick browser plugin. EndNote Quick is basically a plugin that makes it super easy to save references and full text PDFs to your EndNote library directly from your web browser. The browser extension is available for Firefox, Google Chrome, and Opera, and it can be downloaded by going to quick.endnote.com. Simply follow the instructions to download the extension for your chosen browser, Firefox in my case. Once installed, you should then see the extension in the corner of your browser, and there'll be more on how to use this later on in the video. Now we have everything we need to get started with EndNote. Let's begin by taking a look around the program. When you first launch EndNote, you'll be asked to either open an existing library or create a new one. Since this is our first time, let's create a new one. Select a place on your computer that you want to save your library and associated files in, and give your library a name. Click Save to set up the library. Now inside of EndNote, you will notice there are four main sections to the interface. On the left, we have a sidebar where you can toggle to view all your references. Those recently added, and those that you have deleted. Under this, you will also see groups. These are like subfolders where you can organize your references. There's more on this later. Then we have various literature databases that you can search directly inside of EndNote. In the main window in the middle, this is where you will see your list of references. I'll show you how to add some shortly. There's also a search bar at the top where you can quickly search the references in your database. To the right, there's another sidebar which will display all of the information for a reference for when it is selected. Finally, at the top, we have a standard menu with additional options like you would see on most other softwares. Let's now move on to the different ways you can add references to your EndNote library. There are four main ways that you can add references to EndNote. Either manually add the references yourself, add the references via an online search directly within EndNote, download a reference file from the internet, or use the EndNote Quick extension to add references directly from your web browser. To manually add a reference yourself, click on this icon here, or go to References, New Reference. This will open a new window where you just need to manually populate the fields with the information for your reference. I'll do this for a journal review article that I found online. And if you have the full text PDF for this reference, you can switch to the PDF tab and upload this from your computer. Once you're happy with your entry, switch back to the Edit tab and click Save to add it to your library. You can then close this window. You can now see that the reference is listed in the main window. What about adding references via an online search inside of EndNote? To do this, you will obviously need to ensure you have an internet connection. In the sidebar to the left, select one of the online search databases. You can also use the plus icon to add additional search databases, and in some cases this can include your institution's library database. For this example, I'll search PubMed. You can then use the search options at the top to populate fields that will find your reference. For journal articles, you can usually just enter the lead author's name, the journal it was published in, and the year. Then hit search. Once the search is complete, you should see the results listed below. If you can't find the reference that you're looking for, then you may need to tweak your search terms and try again. Here's the reference I am interested in. To add this to my EndNote library, I'll simply select it and click the plus icon. Now I have two of the same references in my library, but the one I just added does not contain the full text PDF. 
I know this because it does not show a paperclip icon next to the entry, unlike the version I added manually. A cool tip to automatically search and download PDFs for references that do not have one is to right click on it and select Find Full Text. EndNote will then search the internet to see if it can find the PDF. This doesn't work all the time, but if the journal article is open access, then it usually works. Now I have a full text PDF added. Another way of adding references to your EndNote library is to download a reference file from a web page. Usually when you view a reference, such as a journal article line, you should see an option to send the file to a citation program or simply a citation button. This example shows the reference I added in the previous step on the PubMed website. I can simply go to the Send To and then Citation Manager to download the reference file. Next, find that file on your computer and open it. Sometimes you may need to specify to open the file with EndNote. EndNote will then add the reference to your library. A final way of adding references into EndNote I'll cover is via the EndNote Quick Browser plugin, which we installed earlier on in the video. Again, go to the web page containing your reference, and I'm using the same example as before. If the EndNote Quick extension detects the full text PDF for that reference, you will then see a view PDF icon in the lower corner. When you click on this, it will download a copy of the PDF to your EndNote Quick online account. To add this reference and PDF to your library, select the Export to EndNote Desktop option. Again, this will download a reference file to your computer, Simply open it with EndNote to add it to your library. This is now a good opportunity to talk about dealing with duplicate references in your library. To remove duplicates, go to Library, Find Duplicates. In the new window, EndNote will show you a side-by-side -side comparison for any duplicate entries. Parts highlighted in blue indicate the differences between the two entries. Make sure you pay attention to these fields so you can better understand how to pick the entry you want to keep. Ideally, what you want to do is to select the entry that contains the most complete information. Simply select Keep this record to choose your preferred entry. You then repeat this process until all of the duplicates are removed. Now when you go to see all your references, you should only see unique references. All of the duplicates will then be sent to the trash. Let's now move on to focusing on organizing your references, specifically how to create groups. You can think of groups as folders, where you can add specific references to, to better organize your library. To show you an example, I have a library that contains quite a few unique references. To create a new group, you can either right click on my groups in the sidebar, or go to groups at the top and choose create group. Then you'll want to give your new group a meaningful name. I'll call mine introduction, as I want to add in all references relevant for my essay introduction. To add some references to your group, go to View All References. You can then either right click on an entry and then go to Add References To and select your new group from the list, or you can simply click and drag on the entry to add a copy to your new group. When you do this, you will see the reference in your new group, but note that the reference will always remain in your All References tab too, as this lists all the references in your library. You can also add the same reference into different groups. Once you've added a reference to a group, it will be removed from the unfiled area, which contains all references that are yet to be added to a group. If you like having a lot of groups, then you'll be glad to hear that you can have groups inside of groups by going to Groups and choosing Create Group Set. You can then click and drag on groups in your sidebar to organize them. Another thing to note about groups is that if you delete a group, it will not delete the references inside them from your EndNote library. Only the folder is deleted. The references will remain in your All References section. A cool tool related to groups in EndNote are what is known as Smart Groups. To create a Smart Group, go to Groups, Create Smart Group. What's great about Smart Groups is that you can create a criteria to which references must have to be added to your group. For example, let's say if you only want references that are authored by a specific author to be added to this Smart Group. You can also fine tune the inclusion criteria by using the plus and cross icons to add or remove criteria. Now, when you hit create, the smart group will be created. And if there are references inside your library that satisfy the search criteria set, they will automatically be added to this smart group. 
And what's even more useful is that these smart groups are dynamic. So as you add more references to your library, if there are new entries that match that smart group's inclusion criteria, they will automatically be added to that smart group. So that's an overview of EndNote and the basics of using it. I'll now move on to automatically creating citations and a bibliography or a reference list inside of Microsoft Word by using the EndNote Cite While You Write extension. When you install EndNote, the Cite While You Write function in Word should be added to the ribbon at the top. Sometimes you might not see this. If so, try right clicking on the ribbon and selecting Customize Ribbon. Then find the EndNote option and ensure it is ticked. Let's take a quick look around the EndNote options inside of Word. To the left, you can add and edit citations. This is the option you will likely use the most. Next to this, you can change the citation and bibliography style. Then there are a few other options you can tweak after this. Adding a citation from your EndNote library into Word is super easy. Simply click on the area in your document where you want to add the citation. Then select the Insert Citation button. It's then a case of using the search box to find the reference in your library. Usually entering an author's name does the trick. Then select the correct entry from the list and click insert. You can now see the citation in Word. Another thing that will happen after adding your first citation is a bibliography will be created at the end of the document. If you wanted to go ahead and add more citations next to your first one to support the same statement, then just repeat what you did earlier by selecting the citation and going to insert citation. Then find the other reference and add this. If you want to manage or delete citations, you can select it and go to edit and manage citations. Here you can change the order of the citations by using the up and down arrows. Or to delete a citation, select it and find the remove citation option under the edit reference option. Up to now, I've just been using the annotated reference style in the document. If you want to change the style used, then simply use the drop down menu at the top to switch to a new one. If you can't see the reference style you're after, then try going to select another style. EndNote comes with a lot of reference styles to choose from, which covers the majority of journals. If you still don't see the style you're after, you have two options either create your own or download the reference style online and add it to EndNote. To create your own reference style in EndNote, go to Tools, Output Styles, and then New Style. You can then go through each of the options to fine tune your style. To download a reference style online, head on over to the EndNote Output Styles page. After finding a style you want, download it, and then open the file with EndNote. With the file open, you can review and make any adjustments and simply save it as a new style. Just before I wrap up this video, I just wanted to mention a few more things about working with Microsoft Word. Usually, instant formatting is turned on. This means that every time you add a citation to the document, the bibliography will be automatically updated. Sometimes, you may want to turn this off, and to do this, select Instant Formatting, and then turn it off. If you do switch it off, make sure you update the citations and bibliography before you finish by selecting this option here. Lastly, you will notice that your citations are linked to your library. This means you can edit citations to add or remove entries. However, sometimes you may want to remove these links and just have everything shown as plain text instead. To do this, simply go to Convert Citations in Bibliography and select to convert to plain text. Be careful to always keep a copy of your document containing the citation links just in case you want to easily edit them again in the future. That brings me to the end of this beginner's guide to EndNote. You should now know how to use EndNote to manage your references and cite them in Microsoft Word.